This is the 12th of May 2015. We're at Vincent Corporation in Tampa, Florida. Uh, that's a KP6 press. One we're going to be using is this one, a CP4. Um, we've been cleaning it out. That white stuff you see there is foam. We were running some sort of black stuff. Here's the black stuff. The screen in this press has perforations down inside there that are six thousandths of an inch, 150 microns in diameter. We've torn out the screen down at this end. We're going to run anyway. Uh, here's the material we're going to be running. It's a polymer uh, with water, and um, we want to find out if it'll work in this screen. We think the screen will not blind over. So we're getting water out. And, um, and there went the screen. Uh, more Did screen it? tore away. There's another patch. No, it, it may be okay. I expect trouble down at that end. Yeah. How about over here? It looks a lot better over here. We've got a, a bigger perforated. Uh, so the white stuff is pushing out the black stuff. I think you can see that. And we still have the discharge cone open. Nasty clumping in there. But um, the trick with polymer is to make sure it doesn't jam inside the machine. I see stringy polymer coming out here already. What's it doing in the inlet hopper? Okay, it's feeding fair. Oh, there you go, Bob. Oh, okay. Looky, 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 looky. Helping it right up. Um, and we slowed this screw down to 50 hertz. Uh, it's about normal speed. It had a high speed gearbox on it. I don't know why we slowed it down a bit. Give it another scoop. So this is real time. We're still getting some light loop out here, but we can see the polymer is coming out. It's coming out okay. We, uh, hmm. There you can see the 6,000 perforated screen down in there, barely. Those are tiny holes, but what I'm seeing here is the screen is not blinding. The rubber is not, uh, polymer is not coating over the screen. So uh, for a fine filtration, it's probably in good shape. Uh, oh, that bucket. Okay. okay, ripping the screen out. Coming out wider now. Again, there, here's our, our polymer. I don't know if that's what anybody wants to. Of course, it would, it would be clean. The concern is the wet. Yeah, are we doing what needs to be done to this material? Okay, it looks like the material is coming out wet. We take a handful and we can still squeeze a lot of water out of it. So apparently we've not squeezed out the water. Don't put the on the This stuff is very strong, and when I do this and get a fistful of it, I can still squeeze a stream of water out of it. Okay, here's our three. Look up that big clump that I had standing up there. Maybe you can see where it, it had clumped together somewhat. And um, if I go over here in this pail, we just open these three pails. Okay, this is more like the first one that I found, found yesterday. And this is what we've got in here. Now I'm going to break all of this up uh, like the first pail that we just ran. 
Okay. There's a clump of it, and if you squeeze it, it's got a lot of water in it that we can squeeze out. And so we're going to try and get a scoop brush to do that. Uh, we thought all these samples were going to be the same, but anyway, two buckets came in, very crumbly material. And then uh, two buckets came in. The first one we ran in the CP4 with a fine perp. And then one more bucket that is it's stuck together. Uh, I don't know if there's supposed to be a difference or not. Okay, this is the next press we're going to run. It's got a, a more robust screen. Uh, that ought to work. Um, grab this one, even though it's a six inch press, because it has a rotating cone feature. You'll see this discharge door will turn. And we just put a longer bolt right here. Uh, this will act as a stripper to strip the material away. There's a spin stop down here um, that stops it from spinning, and this rips it away. We'll see how that works. Okay, there we turn the press on, and you can see how this cone rotates. 60 hertz, 5 horse motor. 5 horse motor. 90 RPM gearbox. Oh, oh, that's right, it's an oversized motor we had left over. This right. material in here is called coppice, it's a poplar tree, and we needed extra horsepower to squeeze that. And a little bit of styrofoam that would be cleaning the press out. So, um, Yep, that's what we're going to be running. Now, plenty of horsepower. That's good on this material because yeah. it's have to uh, lock up, jam up, gum up. We, uh, yeah, we can't really expect this to work. Okay, we're feeding in the material. Going into the inlet hopper. Good dewatering. See if it stays this way. Material is pushing out. Nothing comes out of this press unless something is going in to push it out. Wow, we've got the uh, polymer all ready. Full length screen dewatering. I just ran in the cone there. We'll see uh, what happens. Pouring in. That's the first pail. Must be feeding pretty well. We couldn't afford a pail like that. Yeah, this stuff feeds real well into the stir press. We're getting the cake out. Air pressure is one bar. I'm going to run the pressure up in a minute. Um, but this is what's coming out. Yeah, go ahead. I still, I'm down at one bar pressure, 15 psi. To see what happens if this will keep on working. Now if I grab some of this cake here and squeeze it, I can still get some water out. So I'm going to run the air pressure up. And my air pressure is going up. That got a little good.
just drop this chunk in there. It may make a mess, but we'll find out. What I'm trying to find out is if we can jam up this press. If we ran, took this press apart, and you can see it was not stuck to the uh, screw. So the material uh, comes off well. Uh, a little something there. Anyway, we're still doing this over here. And we're throwing some nasty stuff. Pump, okay. Let me get one more clump here. Okay, there's clump. And I hope I can still squeeze water out of this one. So I'm not sure if this will work or not. continuing to feed out of the press. Now I'm surprised we haven't locked up the press. The amp for a six something. Good. In the cone in an effort to clear out the press. Alright, Bob, the stuff is coming through now? Yeah. No water. Whoa, you can still squeeze water out. A lot warmer. <laughs> and we're heating it up, yep. Aha, uh -huh, I see some. testing. Um, there's another twin screw press we were testing recently. We have got presses all over the place. Um, this is the uh, test area. Of course, we are looking at you know, a couple dozen screw presses here and shredders. Uh, this is shipping, receiving, rental presses come back. We're looking over at the screw department. These are the flights of steel that we buy to um, uh, build screws. And uh, so we make lots and lots of screws. And with this many screws, surprising, we still have one, two, there's three guys making more screws. I think there's another one back there. We've got a machine shop, of course, um, mostly lathes. Got one big vertical boring mill where we can straighten out, get proper alignment between the screw and the gearbox. Uh, this is the assembly department. This one's shipping out today. Uh, and so everything's focused on that. There's another one press going together. And, uh, oh, I'm waiting for the screw on this one. And some of the uh, poplar tree stuff we want to run. One one. Oh, we, we've got frames for lots of screw presses. Lord, all the screws. Um, we uh, don't build a, a powder press until we need it. Usually there's a half a dozen going together right here, but. Looks like we cleared them out. There's a screen department over there. Frame of a press. But anyway, the screen department's in the background back right there. We also have our chickens. These are Golden Phoenix. And our hen just had a brood of 10 chicks the day before Mother's Day. So uh, these are our pets here at Vincent. <laughs>